we're living through this extraordinary technology revolution. And in my judgment and the judgment of my institute, which now works in uh, many different countries throughout the world, this technology revolution gives us the opportunity to do something that is not been conceived of for many, many years. And that is to reimagine the state itself. Because a 19th century state was a minimalist state. Didn't do a lot for people, didn't raise a lot of money, didn't spend a lot of money, didn't do a lot for people. The 20th century state grew into this huge apparatus, especially in, in developed nations with large amounts of money spent, a large amount of provision from government, but today often not operating in a very effective way. The question for this century is can you reimagine the state through the technology revolution, create a 21st century state that delivers high quality services at much lower cost to their citizens? That's the challenge. There's no one better to discuss it with than uh, my friend, Prime Minister Eddie Rama of Albania. Albania is a country that, you know, back uh, in the 1980s and early 1990s was very much left behind by the world. Um, over these past years, it's made extraordinary leaps forward. Uh, its GDP has risen enormously just over this last 10 years or so. And Eddie, as prime minister, is focused very much on the technology revolution and what it can do for his country. And I, I actually would just wanted to start, Eddie, with, a, <clears throat> with an overall sort of macro question, which is, I mean, the title of our, our session is, is tech the solution? I mean, I would say, but tell me whether you agree or not, it's, it's certainly a very major part of it. How big is this technology revolution, and how hard is it for political leaders to keep up with it? First of all, I want to correct a bit the presentator, because uh, I was presented as a prime minister and uh, Tony was presented as the 51st Prime Minister of Britain, but I want the audience to know that I would not be nor prime minister and either a man engaged in politics without him. And before knowing him, uh, he was my uh, role model and uh, he was the inspiration to enter politics, to reform the Socialist Party and to believe that uh, not only politics can be a force for good, but it can be a third way for the left. So I wanted this to be clear uh, because that's how you will all understand that I can't be more privileged than finding myself being interviewed by someone that uh, now is a friend and is an owner, but is the main reason why I became a prime minister. And uh, I would say that tech for sure is the solution for a country like Albania and I guess for other countries like Albania because we came out from a long time in darkness. We were the North Korea of Europe. We were completely cut off the world. We were told to be the only true communist country. And for us, all of them that pretended to be communists were just traitors. So we were completely on our own in a poverty that for me today is even impossible to process how it was possible, and an isolation like no one. And of course, we entered the new era of change, of uh, building uh, democratic state of building institutions. But what we learned in the hard way is that you can change a system in uh, some days, but you cannot build institution in many years. 
And so the institution building process in the traditional way would have taken, I don't know how many decades, if not centuries. With technology, you can make a jump in the future that it's really something that until the current events of uh, innovation would be unimaginable. And generative AI is obviously, I mean, this is its own revolution. And you're trying now in Albania to take advantage of that. What, 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 are, you, what are you doing? You're, you're building a digital infrastructure. Uh, you've got plans for digital identity. I mean, tell us about the, the different elements of, of how you're bringing about this digital revolution to the country. Listen, we, I don't know how many people in the audience are familiar, but I'm sure that everyone that has uh, known something about Albania in the last uh, 30 years have heard that it's a country that suffers from corruption, is a country that suffers from crime, is a country that suffers from all the, uh, all the bad things. And a, a big part of it has been true. Uh, a part of it has been uh, kind of augmented by, by, by the international media. But when you have to build a modern state, when you have to build functioning institutions, you have to count on people, right? So in every process, you have to count on people. And counting on people is not enough. Because as, as uh, the say goes, uh, it's not the people that corrupt the systems is the systems that corrupt the people. So you need to build systems that are then capable to keep the people on leash in terms of respecting procedures, respecting uh, everyone right. And what technology does is that gets out of the picture the middleman and makes possible that the system of service to the people relates directly with the people. Uh, let me give you an example. We, uh, uh, we changed completely the way we, uh, we deal with our public services with uh, papers. Uh, until not many years ago, for every paper, for every certificate, for every license, for every type of uh, type of uh, document to prove things like you have never been, uh, 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 you have never been uh, convicted or you have never been taken off your driving license, you had to stay in line, in long lines, in front of counters, uh, in bad conditions, and then a lot of bad things happen even to cross the line and to get the paper before. And all of that is digitized now? All is digitized. We don't have any more counters. Everything is a direct interaction between the person that needs uh, need a service and his smartphone or his computer. People said at that time this will kill practically the chances for the elderly, will kill the chances for the farmers to have access. On the contrary, this gave access to all of them that in the physical relation had no chance to go and stay in the line and uh, take the bus to go from the village to the city and so on. And I think the, the thing that's interesting is you can literally go through every single aspect of government and see how change can come about, right? You can do it in healthcare, you can do it in education, you can do it in the payments that are made to people, but you also have done it in terms of your move towards Europe and how you, how you change the regulations in order to, to make Albania a, a good partner for that European part. Yes, this is, another, this is another, another example how technology can, uh, can be the bless of countries that are behind and how technology can make uh, countries that are behind do things that without technology would have been impossible and even overcome countries that are far, far uh, uh, ahead of them. Uh, to enter the European Union technically, we need to transpose all the so-called 
body of law of the European Union. And just to give an idea to the audience, is about more than 4,000 laws and bylaws that need to be transferred. Traditionally, this has implied for countries before us an army of translators, an army of drafters, an army of certifiers, and as a minimum, in the case of Croatia that was very successful, seven years. So it took se seven years for Croatia? Seven to, years to do just to pass, this, the right. transfer uh, of papers. It's mountains of papers. Uh, so luckily, uh, one of the most prominent figures of uh, OpenAI and ChatGPT is an Albanian lady. So I called her when ChatGPT just appeared, and I said, can you help Albania to enter faster in the European Union? She thought I was laughing. I said, no, listen, can we use this right. to make the transfer? She said, mm, interesting, let's try. And our, our tests are telling us that we can do it as the technology is now developed uh, in uh, a bit more than two years. But seeing how the technology is improving every month, I'm sure that this time will shorten. So it's about, change, it's about a change that uh, it's even impossible to get where it can bring us in terms of, in terms of fast arrivals in, 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 in stations that otherwise would have needed generations and generations to arrive. And in terms of the infrastructure that you require to, to make these changes, it is about having a a cloud infrastructure, so your data are held in the cloud, and then the, the digital identity, so that each citizen can, can interact with government through their, through their smartphone. So we are working with the two bigger, uh, with two bigger, let's say, sources of knowledge and of technology uh, of our time, uh, Microsoft and uh, Oracle. And uh, we are trying to get the best of the one and the other. And having been attacked uh, very viciously by Iran uh, some time ago and being in, being in uh, perpetuum a target of cyber attacks from, from Iran, we know just not rationally only, but we know from our skin how important it is to have safe data. And going in an Oracle-designed cloud, it's, it's another important reason to have, to have the safety and the integrity of your data by a in a cloud that is designed for you. And it's just Albania's cloud. So this is something that is uh, developing a lot uh, in the Oracle world. And uh, in the meantime, with Microsoft, we are working in artificial intelligence uh, solutions that uh, we are very optimistic will give us an important boost uh, to feel the future much nearer than uh, today. And how do you find your, your own system with this? Because part of the, I mean, anyone who's ever been in government knows that the the, the problem is that government systems you know, can be somewhat resistant to change, let's say. And you know, you've got the potential, for example, in healthcare, you can have something similar to an AI doctor sitting alongside the real doctor. In education, it's possible now. I mean, there are fantastic innovations happening where you can effectively personalize education for young people. You know, when you because you, you'll want to introduce all of these changes into, into Albania. How, how difficult is it to get your system to move? I believe it's more difficult in Germany and Britain <laughs> because uh, these countries, the big countries, developed countries, have also very developed machines of bureaucracy that are made uh, in, the, in other times uh, and that are like uh, very big ships you have to start and turn. Ours is just a little boat, and uh, jumping from that boat and taking, uh, the, taking the new technology as a possibility is just a bless. So 
practically we don't have this. So, of course, we have resistance, but it's more the resistance of laziness sometimes in the bureaucracy. But otherwise, we can do all these things because we don't have to remove mountains that are well settled there, but we have simply to, 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 to run and to run and to run forward. So I don't see this as, uh, as one of the main challenges. Right. So if you, if you take a, this idea that, that it's possible through technology to, you know, what people always talk about is the leapfrog potential. In other words, you, you take a country at a lesser stage of development, but they can pass a developed country um, by the utilization of technology. But to do that, just so that we're clear about it, because these are the changes that you've, you've made in Albania, you've got the, you're putting in place the digital infrastructure, then you'll put in place the applications on top of that, and you'll have the ability for the citizen to interact direct with government across services. I mean, this affects also every part of your economy, agriculture, for example. Yes. Uh what you mentioned about the teachers and the doctors is another part of the blessing because it means that countries like Albania will be able through technology to participate in a space of the best know-how of the world. So uh, this uh, also uh, addresses uh, the problem uh, countries like ours, but also other countries in Europe, are having with uh, staff, with uh, teachers that are, and are, are ready to go in, uh, in another place to teach, or with doctors that are ready to stay for a wage that is not enough. So all the Southern European Union is suffering from doctors leaving and going elsewhere. So right. this is another part of, of, uh, of, the, of the blessing, the, 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 the capacity to get, uh, to get the best know-how through technology. And look at this city. This city is one of the most secure in the world. But it's one of the most secure in the world, not because there is uh, an amount of policemen that is bigger than uh, in other cities in the world. On the contrary, I have been uh, in the, the Emirates now uh, a, a half a dozen of times. I still don't know how a policeman look in this country, because it's the technology. And uh, state-of-the-art technology has made this country one of the countries with the lowest crime rate in the world. So through technology, through this new technology, we can solve problems of criminality, we can solve problems of corruption. And we can give to societies and to countries that, uh, for historical reasons, for uh, many other reasons, are behind in terms of institutional network of a state, the possibility to overcome this uh, very, very long uh, uh, way of uh, falling behind and to proudly serve their citizens. So we're just coming to the, uh, the last minute. And as you say, I mean, the UAE is one of, I would say, four or five exemplar countries in the world in terms of its use of technology. How, so when you look ahead, um, and you know, Albania, over this last 20 years, I think your GDP has multiplied by roughly eight times. So it's a, it's a country that's been accelerating. Where ideally would you like it to be in, in five years' time with the use of technology? I, I uh, ideally, I would want Albania to be, in five years' time, a country that uh, behaves and uh, works like a EU member state. And then will be or not formally in the European Union, this is not our decision. But uh, as we are ending, and you know better than many other people, that uh, inviting a Balkan guy to have a conversation and pretending to to have a short conversation is a mission impossible, but <laughs> still you are doing well. So uh, I want to say one thing at the end, which has, which has to, to do with technology, but also not. So 
we were talking about also before here uh, where this technology will go and what will but one thing i'm not sure the technology will ever be able to bring at home which is the sun the beautiful beaches the beautiful valleys the wonderful mountains the great rivers the fantastic lakes and the very hospital people of Albania. So I want to tell everyone here, come to Albania. And uh, in that, in that uh, environment, you will have even better thoughts about how technology can complement the bless of God for a country that has been very much cursed by its history. Well, Eddie, you spoke of your um, admiration for me. You're one of the leaders I admire most in the world today. Thank you so much for being with us, and congratulations on what you're achieving and what you're going to achieve in the future. And thank you all very much indeed. Thank you.